In this video, I'm gonna show you how to write automated tests for an HTTP server in Node by mocking the database using jest mock functions. In a previous video, I tested an Express API that creates a new user by making a post request to a user's endpoint, passing in a username and password, and that should end up storing a username and password in a database. And in that video, I skipped over everything that had to do with the database and just focused on the HTTP stuff. Now in this video, I wanna pick up where I left off and actually test that app.js sends that username and password to a real database. But I don't wanna test that it actually stores it in a real database. What I'm gonna do is mock the database and test my mock to see if it would actually store it in a real database. So before we get into the implementation, let's think about how we could actually test that the username and password get stored into a database. We could write an automated test that makes a post request to our server to create a new user. And the server might run some internal logic, maybe it validates the username and password, and then it will store it in the database. We could then write an automated test that queries the database directly and checks that the valid data got stored into that database. Or we could then write another HTTP request to maybe try and log the user in. And if the login is successful, we know that everything's working because the user should be able to create a new account. And then if that's successful, they should be able to log in successfully. What if, on the other hand, I just wanna test each piece of my app independently. I just wanna test if the HTTP server part of my app is working without testing if the database is working or without testing if the internal validation logic is working. In a previous video, I showed how we can separate the server side logic from the database logic using something called dependency injection. We can use this now to actually mock the database and just test the HTTP server independently. So when we set up the app, we can pass it a mock database. And the purpose of a mock is to test the interactions between different parts of our application. So what I can do is test that my HTTP server calls the correct methods on my database file without actually having to test the database directly. As long as it calls the correct methods and passes in the correct data, then I'll have some level of confidence that if I instead inject a real database into the HTTP server file, that everything will work correctly. If it works with my mock database, hopefully it will work with my real database as well. So we're gonna test the interaction between my server and the database, not actually the database directly. So what I'm gonna do here is modify my app.js file so I can pass in the database, so in my tests I can pass in a mock database. So this is basically the same setup as my previous video, and if you haven't watched that, I suggest you watch that first. But basically the app.js logic is now wrapped up inside of a function where we're gonna hand it the database that it's gonna use. And in my production code, I have a database already. I have a MySQL database. And for now, let's just assume that this file is completely tested and I have tested that these functions work correctly with the database, that if you were to call create user, it would actually insert a new user into a MySQL database. So my production code is actually gonna pass in the correct database, but in my tests, I'm gonna pass in a fake database and test those interactions. And really what we're trying to do here is pass in an object where we have a create user and a get user function, because that's all the app is expecting is an object with these two methods. And we could create some fake functions here. So I could create a, a mock create user function and pass that into the database and then write some tests in here to make sure, okay, was a username and password actually passed into this? Was this function called maybe just one time and not multiple times by accident? Uh, if I return a value here, uh, let's say I return a fake user ID, was that value then used by app correctly? So it's just testing the interactions with my fake version of the function so that my real version of the function should work. So I just wanna test interactions with my fake version of the function, which will give me some confidence that it will work with the real version of the function. Now we can just set up these mock functions directly in the code like this and just handle all of the logic ourselves. But since we're using Jest, there is actually a really nice way of creating mock functions using jest.fn. So I can create a new create user function 
using just FN. And this will actually keep track of all those things that we might want to test. So it will keep track of the number of times this function was called. It will uh, keep track of the parameters that were passed in. It will allow us to specify some sort of fake return value so we can test it actually uses the return value of the function correctly and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and I'll leave a link to the documentation on just mock functions in the description. But this is what we're going to use for the create user and the get user method in our fake database object here. And because I'm using ES modules, I actually have to import the Jess global object here. So I'm just gonna run the tests that are already in here to make sure everything's working before I start making new tests to test the interaction with the database. So everything's still passing from my last video. Uh, so now what I wanna do is test some of these interactions. So when a username and password is posted to the user's endpoint, I need to make sure that that username and password is actually passed on to the database's create user function. So here I'm just making that post request with super test and I'm sending in a username and password. And the first thing that I'm actually going to test is that the create user, the mock create user function uh, is called, so calls.length only once because there's a chance that maybe I messed up my code and it calls create user multiple times. We'd have multiple users, that wouldn't be good. So I'm just going to verify that this function was only called once. And again, I'll put the documentation link in the description, but uh, basically this is just Jest's interface for figuring out how many calls there were to this function. So if I run this test again, we'll see that it fails because this function was called zero times and I was hoping it was actually gonna be called once. So back in my app.js, if the username and password were passed to the post request, I need to check that the database.createUser function is actually called. I'm just trying to make this current test pass, so I'm just gonna call it without any arguments. And this now passes. And this is, again, just testing the interface. So if I pass you a database object, will you actually call that function? And the next thing I wanna test is that the first parameter that is passed in to the create user function is the username, and the second one is the password, because in my real database, I'm gonna to need to make sure that they get passed in in that order to make sure that everything works. So the syntax for that is gonna look like this. So this function can be called multiple times. So we're saying the very first time that the create user function is called, get me the first parameter that was passed into that function. And the first time it was called, get me the second parameter that was passed into the function. Uh, so the first one should be username, because that's what I'm passing in here as the username, and the second one should be password. So if I test this now, this fails because it was expecting to find username and it actually found undefined because I'm not passing anything into this create user function. So to make this pass, I could pass in uh, the username and password. And then if we run this test again, there we go, it's now passing because it's actually getting the right parameters. But this test is not great because it's only testing a single username and password. So I actually just wanna update this to test multiple username and passwords just to make sure that app is actually passing in the correct data and it isn't just hard coded to username and password because that would still make this test pass. So just to give me more confidence in this test, I'm gonna refactor it a little bit. So now I just have an array with different username and password combinations, and I'm gonna loop over that array and make the post request with each of those combinations. And then I'm testing that the create user was only called once and that the correct username and password was passed in each time. So if I run this test now, it's actually going to fail, but not because my production code is bad, it's because my tests are actually bad. So this create user mock function is gonna keep track of all of the state every single time it's called. So this is actually gonna get called three times. So this is actually a bad test here. And the uh, second time it's called, this should be one. And the third time it's called, this should be two. So I could add more logic to make sure it's called the appropriate amount of times in each loop and, and change this from a zero to a one to a two each loop. Uh, but there's actually a slightly nicer way. So at the beginning of each loop, what I can do is uh, call mock reset on the create user function. And this will just reset everything back to its initial state so that each individual loop will be a brand new test on that function. That's really what I want. I wanna make sure that each of these tests is individual and independent from the previous ones. So now if I run this test, 
that's all passing because the username and password is correctly being passed to my database create user function. Uh, and on the topic of this mock reset, I actually like to create a before each block and reset this function before every single test just to make sure because there is state that will be kept track of between individual tests and we want each test to be able to run individually and independently of each other. It's just nice to reset that state back to its initial default state before any single test runs. When the server calls the create user method here and it passes in a username and password, this should return the ID of the user that was just created in the database. And what I wanna do is check that the server actually grabs that return value and sends it back down to the client in the response body. So let's see what that test is gonna look like. So before I actually make the request to the server, before I make that post request, I'm gonna tell the create user function that it should resolve to the value one. And instead of just mocking a return value, I know that this is gonna be an asynchronous method because in my real database, this has to be asynchronous as to make the database connection. So I'm mocking the resolved value, which means that it's gonna return a promise that resolves to the value one. Uh, then I make the request. And then I'm checking that whatever value was passed in here, in this case one, is in fact whatever the user ID is in the body of the HTTP response. So if I run this test, this should fail. But again, this isn't a great test because I could just come in here and change this value to one and then that would make the test pass. So instead of just testing one single user ID value, what I'm gonna do is put it in a for loop again. So now I've just set up a basic for loop. Uh, I just chose 10 randomly. And every single time this loops through, it's going to increment the number by one. So the first time it tests this, uh, it's going to mock the resolve value to zero. And then it's going to test that it actually got zero back in the user ID. And uh, just to be safe, I'm also going to mock reset this on every single loop. So before this happens, we reset it. We mock the resolved value uh, make the post request and then check that whatever ID came back from the database, because this is the database function, uh, is sent back in the response to the client. So if I run this test now, this should hopefully fail. Perfect. Because it was expecting zero, it received one, so I've hard coded one in there. So now in here, the way of making this pass is going to be pretty simple. <laughs> So now we're just gonna get the return value back from the create user function and send that back to the client because that is the user ID. Uh, so if I run this test now, so now all my tests are passing and what we've done here is tested that the interaction with the create user function is working the way we expect it to work. So in my app file, this function has been tested using a mock, checking that the interaction works. And the idea is that now if I pass in a function that connects to a real database, we know that it's gonna call it correctly with a username and password and whatever return value we return out of this function, it is gonna use correctly. So as long as I test this function independently and then I just inject this database into the app.js file, then everything should now be working and we get to test things independently. So that's it for an introduction to mocking and using just mock functions. In a future video, I'll actually go over how to test a database so that we can test the other part of our app.